Hello everyone, welcome back to Add a Spec Guide, and in this video, my colleague Ron and I are going to talk to you about something that's been very topical, been in the news everywhere. Tesla has had a major recall, Ryan. It affects almost all of their vehicles. This one included. Yes. So this specifically has to do with autopilot, which is Tesla's term for its driver assistance system, and specifically the auto steer component of it. Also, importantly, this is legally a recall, to be clear. It is actually a recall. However, you're not going to have to take your Tesla into uh, a service center or even have a mobile service appointment. This will be done as an over-the-air software update just to get that out of the way. But Ryan, let's clear up some misconceptions about this. Talk about Tesla's history of software updates, uh, what to expect here for owners, whether you're getting into Tesla for the first time or you're an existing owner worried about how this update might change things. Let's just... Um, you know, clear everything up, talk about it even handedly, because there's been so much polarized discussion about this. I feel like it's time to just break it all down. Sounds great. Okay, Ryan, let's give some context here. This, of course, recall, it is technically a recall, is a software update that affects 2 million, over 2 million Tesla vehicles, but it's not without context. Tesla has done software recalls before. That's right, and this is an official recall uh, in the legal sense, in every sense. Uh, however, they're able to resolve this with an over-the-air update. That's the main distinction, and why some people uh, would not consider this a recall, but it is a recall, uh, in fact. Yes, and uh, the historic you know, uh, context most recently is in February of this year uh, with Tesla's full self-driving feature, which is a beta feature you have to pay extra for. It um, is you know, not actual full self-driving, but it is trying to get there. It's an adaptive driving assistance system. Uh, the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration uh, is a part of an ongoing probe of Tesla, issued a recall, and Tesla software updated over 360,000 vehicles affected by that. That's right, and again, I think this has a lot of similarities with it. In fact, I believe it's the same exact probe, multi-year long, and it is still ongoing. Yes. And this most recent one has to do with auto steer. Yes, and auto steer is part of autopilot. So we mentioned FSD, full self-driving. Autopilot, Ryan, has been standard on Tesla's for quite a while, since when? like 2015, I believe? Uh, 2015 was yeah. the first version of Autopilot software. However, they did have the hardware installed on uh, previous uh, older vehicles as well. Right. If you buy a new Tesla now, you have standard Autopilot features like Auto Steer. And Ryan, Auto Steer is essentially a lane centering system. Tesla's not the only one to do this. Uh, Autopilot is a good system. It's not without its issues, which we'll discuss, and that's part of NHTSA's probe here. So basically, uh, we'll talk about what's actually going on. But Ryan, you mentioned over-the-air software. So no one's going to have to take their Tesla into a showroom. No one's going to have to even have a mobile service appointment. It's just done automatically. Yeah, and this is a uh, great contrast to my previous car. I had a Chevy Bolt, which was unfortunately affected by one of the worst recalls of EVs ever. Uh, they had batteries that were catching fire, and that required me to bring uh, my Bolt into the dealership three separate times. And two of those times, I lost the car for the entire day. And the third time, it was uh, multiple days, actually. So it's really nice to be able to have a recall that's resolved with just an over-the-air update. I don't need to bring the car in, don't have to worry about anything. It's yep. just going to be uh, resolved overnight. Yep, and you don't have the update yet, but presumably that will come in the next few days. I think the cars with the most recent versions of Autopilot hardware are going to get it first, and then it'll be rolled out in stages to progressively older cars. This can affect cars like the very first Tesla Model S's that had the Autopilot upgrade. So huge breadth of vehicles affected in this latest stage of this probe here. Um, but Ryan, what's actually Actually going on here is that basically it's a stricter warning message for auto steer and stricter conditions for when you can engage it because auto steer uh, the complaints here allege that basically it is too permissive and when it lets you turn it on yes I believe the language they've they've used is foreseeable misuse and I certainly agree it's far too easy to abuse this system Yes. So, Ryan, can you just demonstrate right now trying to engage auto steer? Right now, we're on a road, by the way, where you uh, can feasibly use auto steer, like a highway or a major high-speed road without right traffic and erupts. Um, how do you engage it? Right. I just pull down on the stock two times. That's the way I have it in the setting. You can change it so that you only have to pull down once, but that's just a personal preference. So, pull down twice on the stock, and there we go. Yep. It's and set and all good to go. 
we can see the blue lines around your car represented there. Um, and yeah, auto steer is enabled, centering your car, it's gonna follow turns and everything. Um, and then Ryan, there's some form of attention monitoring already where it's gonna basically ask you to put in some force into the wheel, right? That's right, if I completely let go of the wheel, eventually after a certain amount of time it will tell me that I need to touch the wheel and basically all I need to do is give it a little bit of a jiggle like that and then I'm good yeah and uh, it's about like a 15 second threshold it's pretty long something along those lines yeah it's it's a long time and that's the limit of the nannying that you get it doesn't pay attention to where you are so even though this is meant to only be used on highways and access roads like this, you can absolutely just activate it on any city street, regardless of whether or not there's traffic. And uh, additionally, it doesn't uh, matter whether or not you're looking at the road. Even though Tesla does have the capability to uh, monitor your attention, which they use for full self-driving, they currently do not use that uh, for auto steers. So if I wanted, I could just put all my attention onto my phone, not pay attention to the road at all, and the Tesla won't say a thing. Yeah, so basically this is enforcing that, like you said, that same stricter requirement of attention monitoring that full self-driving uses, in the case of like the uh, car with the, uh, your hardware, using that camera to make sure you're actively paying attention and uh, having, I think, a more prominent warning message as well. So it's kind of like an interface update. It might also, like you said, in like geographically restricting where you can use auto steer, make auto steer more limited. And I can see some owners, Ryan, being like, oh, that sounds bad, why would I want that update? Yeah, and I, I think the reality is that yes, this is in a lot of senses a quote unquote downgrade for those using auto steer. However, I think it's a really needed uh, update. It's far too easy to abuse this system and we've seen, I'm sure everyone has seen a lot of instances online on different social media sites of whatever it is, however they're abusing the system, but even driving without a driver in the seat and just some sort of defeat device and the auto steer still works. It's, it's ridiculous that that's able to work and still allowed to happen. Yeah, there's been all kinds of abuse of it. I think Consumer Reports even had someone, yeah, completely out of the driver's seat, like you mentioned that situation, still able to keep it engaged. There's been so many ways to cheat that system. So it's gonna be a bit smarter about that with the existing car hardware. Again, all done through soft, but let's talk also about the fact that there are other ongoing issues with Tesla Autopilot, that it's a probe is not complete yet. Uh, and of course you as a Tesla owner, Ryan, have experienced issues like let's say phantom braking. Certainly, that's personally my biggest complaint with uh, Autopilot. And phantom braking is essentially a phenomenon that occurs where Tesla Autopilot is engaged and for no apparent reason, it will just slam on the brakes as if you're about to hit a brick wall. So it'll have all the beeps, uh, big warning, and you'll slam on the brakes. And this will happen just randomly in the middle of the highway. And it's frankly, extremely dangerous. Super disruptive. There's been numerous complaints about it. And I think I'm predicting we're gonna see ongoing developments in that. Not part of this latest news though. Correct, it's unrelated to this latest recall. However, uh, I think it's worth mentioning that even though the autopilot system is very advanced, it does a lot of stuff well, there's a lot of stuff that it does, in my opinion, unacceptable, uh, an unacceptable job. It's yeah. just uh, too dangerous to have phantom braking occur regularly. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm gonna expect more software updates and potentially also, right, Tesla uses, let's say, fewer sensors than other automakers do. Like other automakers will use radar on the exterior of the vehicle, in some cases, even LIDAR nowadays for their traffic aware cruise control and lane centering. Tesla's opted just to use cameras. Similar situation on the interior for monitoring the driver, making sure you're paying attention. Tesla just uses a camera for that at the moment. Some other automakers use infrared or they have touch sensors, as we call them, capacitive sensors on the wheel. Um, Tesla is still taking a pretty actually minimalist approach here. And I think they have no indication of like that they're going to, uh, you know, recall everyone's cars and upgrade that hardware. Maybe that could happen. I don't know if I see that being a likelihood, but I wonder, Ryan, if like there does need to be some hardware improvement for these issues to actually fully be solved. I think some of them certainly, uh, and they can, <laughs> the hardware can definitely help a lot. I think Tesla's got some really good software engineers and they can go a long way with just software, but I'm not sure where those limits are and stuff like phantom braking has been a problem for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So it may not be possible to solve it with software alone. 
Yes, so we'll just have to see more to come basically. Stay tuned, update your Tesla, please. I mean, this is, yes, it may make auto steer more restrictive, but this is basically like, you know, cars are like computers or phones now. It's like security upgrades. You kind of update your car, get the new features. I think this is gonna hopefully improve safety, prevent abuse with auto steer, but much more to do. Um, and to make it clear, you know, we're not, not to be overly critical of Tesla here. Tesla is running into these issues because they are the most aggressive company when it comes to both, you know, having really good standard autopilot, right? Driving assist features uh, that come standard if you buy a new Tesla on all their vehicles and having a really good software stack where they can update all these features without having to make people go through a dealer. This is not the case, like you said, it wasn't the case with your Bolt, wouldn't be the case with a Nissan Aria or a Volkswagen ID4, so many vehicles, even Ford, who has made a big deal about their over there updates, Ryan, still makes customers come in for some issues with, let's say, a Mustang Mach-E. Uh, other automakers are figuring this out. Tesla's on the bleeding edge here. Of course, other automakers are also more conservative with these features, but I think we might see more of this to come with other brands. Right, and in my opinion, I think this is a pretty natural consequence uh, for being uh, on the bleeding edge of tech. Tesla is, of course, leading the charge with a lot of stuff, and they were some of the first to introduce these uh, advanced driver assistance systems. Uh, and I think, naturally, uh, it, they're probably going to be some of the first ones to take it a little bit too far, or, or perhaps, uh, uh, need to be reined back a little bit. Uh, and I think this is the first instance that we're seeing of this, or one of the first major instances affecting every single Tesla on the road. Yeah, huge scale. I can see why people are covering it. But long story short, this is not a bunch of Teslas having to be shipped somewhere. This is done as a software update. So kudos to Tesla for that. But much more to do with autopilot, making sure it's safe and reliable and consistent. Um, this is such an interesting topic. Please let us know your thoughts on it. Uh, there's so much to discuss here, also philosophically, about cars being so defined by software nowadays. Uh, but thank you for joining me for this conversation, Ryan. Hopefully this clears up some misconceptions for people and just helps explain the situation. Certainly, and something I'm really interested to hear is what everyone thinks is an effective way to ensure that a system is not being abused while also not making it uh, too much of a nanny, too annoying, and uh, too close of a focus on you. Uh, how do you strike that balance? And I'm, I'm interested to hear what uh, people's thoughts are on that. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you for joining me. Thank you everyone for watching. Let us know what other news you want us to uh, cover, break down, help explain for you. Uh, there's a, a little bit even more in-depth conversation that our uh, colleague Francie had on the Edispec podcast with a big uh, content creator in the Tesla world, Brandon or Tesla Flex. So we'll link that. You can check that out, listen to it or watch it if you want to hear more about the specific issue. But hopefully this has been a good kind of top level breakdown. Thanks again for watching Edispec Guide and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.